Good evening, everybody. I'm Bonnie Hunter in the basement at Quiltville, and this is Quilt Cam, probably for the last time of November 2014, as um, we get into Thanksgiving week next week, and then we're deep in mystery quilt land, and it'll probably be a couple of weeks before we can do this, and by then we'll be in December. So this is it for November, guys. I'm glad that you're here joining me tonight. Hopefully you've brought a project to work on. Um, hopefully you are here to enjoy the evening and maybe eat maybe another hour out of your um, day today. Those of you who have worked full time or you've or part time and you've just arriving home and you're not feeling like you can do anything, just pet the fabric. Just iron the fabric, just sort the fabric. Maybe you'll find yourself wanting to stitch and sit just a little bit and, and make some progress with us. Pull out a UFO. Pull out something that you haven't made decisions on yet. Maybe you have a quilt with a border that you're not quite sure how to finish it. Take some pictures, send them to me. Let's talk about it. Let's see if we can get that done. If this is your first time viewing Quilt Cam, we do this sporadically when my traveling schedule allows. So it's not a set day like um, every Wednesday or every Tuesday or whatever. It happens here or there in between other things. And uh, today just happened to be one of those days where I popped it up this morning and realized that I can't do it tomorrow night because I'm flying Wednesday and have to leave the house at 4.30 in the morning, which means early to bed. So tonight it is. Um, you can feel free to leave me a comment on YouTube or leave a comment on this blog post where this feed is embedded. And that will show up in my email and I can answer your question. You can also leave your comment under the blue guest book button in the left-hand sidebar of the blog. Those all go to my email inbox and I can answer you on my trusty phone, which is where everything comes. I can't answer you on Facebook. So don't leave me a message for Quilt Cam on Facebook or on the Open Studio group or um, anywhere else because I can't get to it. And I may be able to answer you later, but I won't be able to answer you live online. So what am I working on tonight? Remember the nine patches from last week? I got them sewn today. And I wanted to show you the pressing on the back side, if you can see it. If I hold it up here, can you see how this row here, all of the seams are pointing up? And then the next row, they're all pointing down. And then this row, they're all pointing up. This is because I was doing them extra scrappy, not paying attention to lights or darks. And I was um, just sewing strip sets of three, pressing them all one direction. And then I subcut by putting my two strip sets right sides together, nesting those seams. So on the top one, the seams were pointing up, and on the bottom one, they were pointing the other way. Those seams are nested. And I cut through all layers of those, those two strip sets in my two inch increments. And they were already in matched pairs, so I could just feed those through the machine. And then I just had to add the third section on. So this went really, really fast. And I've got my 25 nine patches here that I need. This is going to be a baby quilt for my nephew-to-be. I don't even know his sweet name yet. I do know his last name will be Sherwood. And, of course, he will be teased about coming from Sherwood Forest. And did your parents find you under a rock or a tree or something? But, but we love that. So that's really cute. He will be the son of my brother, Mike, and his wife, Nicole. And he is due in January. So this is, this is when we get the, the baby quilt done. The fun thing about this, let's see if I can even find a piece. Ah, there it is. See this little lovely green right here? I have very, very few pieces of this little, um, it's kind of like a seagrass green um, plaid left. That was my grandpa's shirt. So it's the shirt of the baby's great grandpa and it's just really neat to be putting it in here. My plan is simple. I have an idea. I cut strips to frame the nine patch all the way around. And I've got reds and I've got neutral. So the reds are a, just one red. I'm just pulling one red to be my constant because the whole thing is very scrappy as it is. But my neutrals, I just could not make myself pull just one fabric to be the neutrals. So I pulled out the inch and a half strips and I have um, cut sets of that to frame half of them with the neutrals, half of them with the red. And I know somebody's going to ask, what are the dimensions? I'm not ready to give them yet. It may turn out to be a, a future free pattern on the website. So just hold your horses. You don't need to know it immediately right now. Let me work on the quilt first, work out all the bugs, and then I'll be happy to tell you. 
Uh, my red, this was actually a piece of yardage from the stash. It's not recycled fabric, but it looks like it could fit right in there with those shirt plaids. Can you read that, Salvage? It's a new fabric for me. It says 2010 on it. It's only four years old. That means it's still new for me. Um, one of one of my newer finds because my fabric goes back 30 years. I like this. It, it looks like it fits right in with the plaid. So that's what we're going to do. Let's sew. I am working tonight and I, I was going to switch out sewing machines, but you know, my quarter inch is working right here just fine. And I just didn't feel like switching. And so nobody tell this baby that his baby quilt was made on a pink sewing machine. I always move my beverage far out of the way because I will spill it otherwise. I need to count out 13, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. Why 13? Because 13 get red around them and the other 12 get the neutrals and I don't want to just be going on and not counting. So this is how we avoid pitfalls. Now the trick when, when sewing anything is to test your seam allowance. And I did test my seam allowance um, when I was making these. And I don't know if you can tell or not, but my rectangle fits exactly across here. My nine patches measure five inches. So my rectangle was, was cut five inches long. If I had rectangle, hanging over the edge that means that my seam allowance for my nine patch was too big and i needed to skinny it down so that this rectangle fit you can't just go lopping off a rectangle if it's too big that means that there was something going on in your sewing if this rectangle were going to be too short and my nine patch extends out here that just means that my seam allowance was too skinny and i needed to fix it so fix it Fix it so that your patchwork matches what you're adding next. It makes it so much easier to sew on. And I'm just going to chain sew here. Bring my light around. Now, I went to Ikea twice this weekend. I went on Thursday and I went on Sunday. And you'll be very proud of me. I didn't bring home any other Ikea lights. I think I have enough. I did not need to stock up on more. Alright, so we're going to chain sew here. I'm using a gray thread because it blends with everything. Another thing I do when I sew is I will match the beginning and the end. So I match the beginning, start to sew, and as I'm sewing, match the end so that nothing shifts. So I use my fingers instead of pins when I'm doing straight sewing like this. I want to keep those edges even, and the feed dogs can scooch up the bottom layer more than the top layer so keep those edges together so they feed evenly what i'm going to do with this quilt is going to involve some flippy corners and i'm really excited about it there's just so many different things you can do with nine patches uh oh Will this work or will this not work? If there's more than a quarter inch of salvage, I'm going to have to cut myself a new piece. So I'm going to lay this here and see where the needle hits. Oh, nope, that's going to leave a white line. Okay, we're going to set that one aside. I'll have to cut myself one more short one. That happens sometimes. If that salvage was within the quarter inch, I wouldn't have left it, but mm, not going to be. Fabric is stretchy, especially these plaids. Some of these plaids are more like a homespun. So if you just match your beginning and your end and let anything ease in between there, it'll help to tame that stretchiness. Do you notice the quilt over my left shoulder? That's Carolina Chain. We were working on that last summer and it got quilted today. So now all that's waiting is binding. If I turn my chair, can you see it better? Oh, happy day. That The scraps that one used were oh so fun. 
some old stuff, some new stuff, some really, really old stuff. Last time we did quilt cam, I was talking about my boys um, heading out on their own cruise. They got home yesterday, and they had a great time, although I have to chuckle at my youngest because, uh, well, he's 24, but he said, that kind of cruising is not for me. It was a party boat, and they had DJs and musicians and bands, and it was like a, a five-day-long concert for these people who um, like the electronic music. My older son is really into that. The younger one is not. And it's so funny to watch them come into their own and, and, and find their own niche and the things that they like and the things that their brother does to be able to say that, well, he can do that, but I don't like to do that. Works great. So Jeff said, I think I'd like to cruise with you guys instead. <laughs> so evidently, mom and dad are not so boring that, that it would be okay to cruise with us, but he said he had a good time. And he came back in one piece and I said, did, well, did, did anybody get arrested? <laughs> no. So that was his first cruising experience, first time out of the United States proper. I'm really excited about, um, we've added a cruise for next October, October 4th to 11th. If you missed this last cruise, because it was sold out, we sold out at 100, we're going to do a smaller venue, but it's on the same size of ship. But I will be the only instructor, and you will work on one quilt the entire time we are on the, on the cruise, instead of having six, six different classes going on. And if you're interested in that, be watching on the blog for information. Um, this is so new, we just finalized dates on Friday. So it's not up on the So Many Places website yet, but it will be. And uh, we are limiting that to 50 participants. We will be taking up two large conference rooms. You will set up and have that machine as your machine to sew on. Our machines are provided. They're Janome machines. We had Horizons this last time. Gorgeous machines. Um, really, really nice. And so you will set up your station, and that will be your station for the entire cruise. This last cruise, we switched classrooms. So there was a class in, in the morning and another class in the afternoon, and you had to pick up and take your stuff with you. This time, it's going to be much more relaxing, and we're going to have a good time. So that's limited to 50. Be watching on the website. I will post about it as soon as it gets up on the So Many Places website and there will be a tab at the top of my blog to tell you more. I hope you'll uh, join me. It's going to be uh, sailing out of Port Canaveral, Florida. We're going to hit um, the Bahamas and St. Martin and St. Thomas. And St. Martin and St. Thomas are two of my favorite places to travel to. So you won't want to miss that one. All right. Let's check in. Wait a minute. I got three more to sew, and then we'll check in. How's that? Uh-oh. Look what I found. Another one. These ones were hiding down in there, so we'll have two more we'll have to cut. Looks like I just missed the end when I was trimming those to size. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to check the inbox and see who's tuning in with us tonight. We've got lots of people tuning in tonight. I'm going to start right at the top. 
This is from Rhiannon, who says, so excited to sew with you today from sunny Auckland, New Zealand. So hello to sunny Auckland, New Zealand from cold, wet, and rainy Wahlberg, North Carolina. She says, I am sewing bindings onto some placemats for my nieces for Christmas. I need them finished for Thursday when I fly home to see them. They're in Melbourne, Australia. I can't wait for Grand Illusion to start. Do you guys know it's like 11 days? We just have 11 days, that's all. Um, it will be my first quilt of yours. I have most of my fabrics and will get the rest when I visit my favorite quilt store while I'm in Melbourne. Here is my view today and the mats I am working on and she's sending her photo here. So this is her, oh, it does look sunny and it looks like the laundry is out on the wash out behind the laptop there. That's her view where she's sewing. And these are, let's see if I can get that a little bit bigger, the little Christmas placemats she's working on. There's a Santa and a reindeer. How cute is that? Really sweet. So you've got, you're under the gun too, because you've got just a few days before you have to fly. I know what that's like. Connie Hendricks says, see my comment on the blog about this. Okay, well, I can't, I can't read the comments on the blog right now, but it looks like she's making a four patch quilt with alternate squares. I'm limited to what I can see um, in my email. So if you leave a comment on the on the blog post, it, it should get to me unless you posted it on a different uh, comment on the blog. Well, maybe I'll have to look for your name. It should be in here because blog posts come here. They just don't, they sometimes take their time. Lily says, it's Lily from Sault Ste. Marie, and I'm so pleased that I could catch Quilt Cam tonight. Hi, Lily, how are you? She says, my friend Beth from Phoenix messaged me that it was going on tonight. Thank goodness for great friends. Yes, real friends don't let quilt friends miss Quilt Cam. <laughs> I'm working on some beading on an art quilt to look like nighttime stars. I call it Between Heaven and Earth. I still have to add some quilting details in the borders and satin stitch along the zigzags in the borders to make them stand out a bit more. My deadline is Friday. Boy, we've got a lot of gals with deadlines going on tonight. She says, it's a birthday present and wish me luck. This is beautiful. Look at that. There it looks like a plateau there and the moon in the sky. I'm ready for somebody to start singing Akuna Matata. <laughs> <laughs> it's wonderful, beautiful. So glad you could join us, Lily. Candy says, Ricky's pineapple blossom, and she sent me a photo. Let's see if this will open. I open it with Facebook. If it'll let me in. Oh my goodness, that's looking wonderful. She says, after the workshop with Bonnie on Saturday, Ricky Lee wanted to do the rest of the blocks for Pineapple Blossom on her own. Feeling sick and sore throat and no voice, I left her home today from school. Yeah, she's cutting school so she can stay home quilting. <laughs> no, I'm sure she is feeling yucky. There's something going around in North Carolina because the hubby's got it too. But here are Ricky Lee's blocks. Look at that. The lights are on one side, the darks are on the other, and the blacks go down the center. Those are the, the um, flying geese flip corners. Awesome, girl. I hope she feels better and is back to school and gymnastics really soon. That is just wonderful. I'm going to save that link. Michelle says, love your Carolina chain quilt. So pretty. Which book is the pattern in? The next one. The quilt is going in the next book because it takes it takes time to make all the quilts for for the books. So you'll be finding that um, in spring of 2016. I'm just sharing what I'm working on as I'm working on it, and so that you know how long it takes to write a book between the scenes. Um, Kansas City Star is my publisher, and we've got a nine month lead in time. So nine months before the release date is when my manuscript is done. So that gives me a year and three months from the last release to get 12 to 13 quilts done and the entire manuscript written. So that's a little bit more than a quilt a month and I am I am working hard on getting all of the 12 to 13 quilts done for the next book. And I hope that you'll be patient with me um, when there's not a pattern available immediately. Hopefully this will whet your appetite and you'll, you'll want that book when it does come out. Okay, Lisa Dunlop says, 
It's the mother-daughter duo with you tonight, Lisa and Carolyn. We have been sewing for three days straight. We started our Blue Heavens with you in Champaign, Illinois in July. We both finished the tops last night. Mom beat me, finished by about 20 minutes. So tonight, Mom is sewing wonky wishes, and I am putting together blocks for a second Blue Heaven. We'll attach pics. So excited for the next mystery. The fabrics are ready. Thanks for all you share with us. And that's Lisa and Carolyn. And here's one my blue heaven and this one is in blues if i tilt the camera right i can usually see it clear up just a little bit uh, maybe okay beautiful i love that that looks so great and here it's the same one this is the other gals in red this one i can tell you my blue heaven is a free pattern under the free patterns tab at the top of the blog and it uses the easy angle ruler and companion angle ruler and the whole quilt comes out of two and a half inch strips so you'll want to check that one out okay and i saw one down here i want to get to kevin the quilter says you've done it again and again that carolina chain is just delicious and i can't wait to see what you are doing with this baby quilt i am sure i will love it too thanks for willingly inviting us into your studio to be with you with you to be inspired, Ikea is coming to St. Louis. Oh, be afraid. Be very, very afraid. But pick up a pack of uh, six pack of cinnamon rolls and an ice cream cone on your way out the door. <laughs> you know, those, those, every once in a while, I just get a craving for those Swedish meatballs. You just have to have them. We have had a weekend of Ikea assembly and Ikea return. Um, I really, I really like some of their, their furniture. The Billy bookcases are awesome. And I bought uh, two kitchen islands, one to use as a cutting table here in the studio and one for my, my sewing area at the cabin because you've got to have the proper height to cut. When you're a tall girl, you just, you can't cut at a table and I need, at a short table and I needed storage and I'm in this organizational kick right now. So that's what I'm rewarding myself with those two cutting tables plus a queen size bed frame and a new dining room table and eight chairs. And then I just also picked up since the one bed, um, the queen bed frame worked so well, I went and bought a king bed frame and two side tables for the other guest room at the cabin because we have company coming for Thanksgiving. So you can just imagine all of the assembly going on of furniture. I love it. Katie Gardner says, starting a mini quilt design for a swap with classic pencil and graph paper while watching quilt cam tonight. We call that low tech or old school. <laughs> I love it. Thanks for spending time with us, Bonnie. See you in Lafayette. And then we've got Subi who says, hey, I actually bought a black 301. Yay for Subi. You will love it. Is it a long bed or short bed? She says, I've really been scouring the internet and I found a local one. Hopefully it arrives in time for the new mystery. Great to see and hear you. You will love it, Subi. The 301 is, is the, the best top of the line piecer, hands down. Why am I not sewing on one? Because I want this in a cabinet. And, um, because I want the flat surface and I don't have a cabinet that will fit a 301. And um, this one here has a little uh, bar on the side that fills in the gap and it's on a big heavy spring. So it, it, it springs down. If that weren't there, I could possibly retrofit this cabinet to fit the 301. It has to have um, the, the, the little bra bracket braces on in front here to, to support it. And I've, even got the cradle to insert into there. But I don't know if I want to, this one fits all of my class 15. So I think I'm just waiting to find a 301 cabinet ready to go. So, or one that I can retrofit besides this one because I don't want to give up this one. Anyway, congratulations. You'll have to tell me what her name is and I'm really excited for you. Wendy Bradley says, so happy the quilt cam is on, I'm watching. I was wondering if you ever do quilt cam during the day. I never have the energy to sew in the evening. I have fibromyalgia and find I'm too exhausted by 9 p.m. Love all you do and appreciate everything. Always look forward to your morning blog to read while having my coffee. You know, that's one of those things um, it's hard for me to do because I work. I, I really, I do a lot of work work during the day. Quilt cam is my extra and it usually happens in the evening, but that's why archives are there. When I'm home on a Sunday, 
and not at the cabin. I have done daytime um, Sunday afternoon sessions. It's been several months since we've been able to do that because the weekends that I'm home, we've wanted to go up to the cabin. So quilt cam is kind of one of those things that happens when the hubby is gone playing tennis, when my work for the day is done, and when I am home and have the time to do it. So really quilt cam doesn't happen as often during the daytime as I'd like it to because then I'd have to stay up and work work later in the evening to make up for what we did with a daytime quilt cam. But we'll see what we can do now that I'm I'm have this this last trip to Indiana on Wednesday. I come home Saturday night. This is it for the year. This this is my last gig and we're going to do it really big. Um, then I will be off until the 29th of December when I fly to um, Plano to teach over New Year's. So my 2015 actually starts on December 29th. <laughs> okay, so maybe in there. Let's see if we can work it out where I could stick in an afternoon session or two. I think that would be fun since I will have more time on my hands to spend some time sewing. Andy says, five-minute power purge. She says, Kathy and I are joining you tonight on Quilt Cam. I am so excited that we finally picked the fabrics for the mystery last night. Oh, you go, girls. I can't wait to see what you're sewing with. So looking forward to it. Thank you for sharing your time and talent with us during the busy holiday season from your number one fan. You know, I have had lots and lots of questions on why we do um, mysteries during the holidays. It would be so nice if you wouldn't do it during the busiest time of the year. And couldn't you do it any other time of the year? And I met a gal in my class on Saturday um, in Wilkesboro. And she just, she lost her husband just a few years ago. And she said that the mystery quilt happening during the holidays really helped her hold it all together. She had something to focus her energy on, something bright and cheery, something for herself. So she wasn't wallowing in missing her husband. And for those of us who haven't lost a loved one and tried to make it through the holidays, I don't think we understand how hard that is. So anytime anybody asks me, why are you doing it at this time of the year? You, there's got to be a better time. Can't you do it after the holidays? No, I'm going to do this for those who have a hard time making it through. And the rest of us can just print it off and sew it later. Speaking of sewing, I am going to put these out now. And I didn't have a leader. My leader ender project is up at the cabin. But I'm now going to go and add the, the other side to these. And I'm just leaving these chains together because these seams will be pressed out. I can press them first and then snip between. Except I'm going to need <laughs> two more that don't have salvage at the top. I'm having fun working with these plaids because my brother Mike is a very outdoorsy kind of guy. He hunts, he loves to, you know, he lives outside of Boise, Idaho in Eagle and they, they spend time at his in-laws cabin doing stuff. Um, he loves to garden and work in his yard and he has a huge yard and all of these fruit, tree, fruit trees and a huge garden and uh, he's a very outdoorsy guy so I think that, that working with the plaids is, uh, reminds me of him and he's so excited for the sun to be coming and so is the baby's big sister Elizabeth. My sister-in-law, Nicole, is just amazing. She's a fabulous cook and a great mommy. 
I'm gonna turn this iron here on. Yeah. I just love chain sewing. It makes me one happy girl. One thing I have found about sewing at a cabinet, though, is I like to sit directly in front of the needle. And I have found if I'm directly in front of the needle, oftentimes I am crammed up against the table leg. And that's the one thing that's really frustrating. I wish the leg uh, was about eight inches further away so that I could have my knees really in the space. But at the same time, I really like having the flat surface. And this is the last one, leaving two without short sides. I'm just going to set these two aside right here. Okay. This is driving me nuts. No leader ender project. So I'm just going <laughs> to start sewing the live ones. I'll just leave that in there. It drives me nuts just to end the thread and pull everything up without something left under the needle. So here we are. I've got my little ironing table set right up next to me. We're just pressing these seams out. Oh, I like so far. I think this red was a good choice. So far, so cute. Then we're going to add these rectangles to the top. I was toying and um, going back and forth on what size I wanted these sashings to be. And at first I thought they would be the same size as the squares and I would use a two inch strip. But you know what, I kind of like to change perspective on the units within a block. So you have pieces of different widths, not always the same size. Sometimes we like to shake it up. All right, let me press these really quick and we'll get started sewing the other ones. Usually I stand up to press, but I didn't want to completely disappear from camera. The ironing board's over there. The best thing about going scrappy with the nine patches is that anything goes and you don't have to worry about light or dark placement. They're just kind of a scrappy little mess. The only thing I tried not to do was put blue next to blue, but it's okay if there's more than one blue in there. Just a few more here. I'm a dry ironer. If I need steam, I spray. 
All right, so now we've got 10 of these because two of them are missing sides. Let's check in and see what's going on with y'all. Are you having folks over for Thanksgiving dinner? We may end up, we have the possibility to end up with nine. Um, it'll at least be seven. It may be eight, but it could be nine. Who knows? Um, both sons have to work the day before and the day after. Jeff will... He, he'll be an hour and a half away and he can come up on Wednesday when he is done with work and then go back Thursday night so that he's at, at work on Friday. Actually, he could stay Thursday night and just drive to work from the cabin, but the kid likes to not be late, doesn't want to uh, mess anything up, doesn't want anything to happen, so he's always on the ball and very on time. Um, Jason, however, he's got a three-hour drive at least a three hour drive. And, and that's not so fun to drive in one day. So if he can come up Tuesday, and, or he would, he would come Wednesday evening and then head home Thursday night, um, or he'd have to leave at the crack, crack, crack of dawn on Friday morning. Um, but I sure would love to have them there. You know, and, and having family not that far away, but far enough away, it still makes it hard to get together. But my dad will be coming in from Arizona on Monday, and we'll be up at the cabin um, through the week for that. So there won't be any quilt cam next week. But remember, a week from Friday, first clue, Grand Illusion Mystery. Linda Enneking, uh, is that how you say this? I'm sorry if I completely butchered your name. I'm working on two quilts for my new twin grandsons and want to thank you for introducing me to the Easy Angle Ruler. Yay! She says, the center of my quilt is all half square triangles, so easy to do with the ruler. This was the first project where I used it. I'm sure I will be using it a lot because it was such a help. And the best thing ever, it works with the sizes of strips we already keep on hand. No 7 8 no 3 8 no sewing big and sliver trimming down. So we will be using the Easy Angle Ruler in the mystery coming up. Susan Erler says, Thank you so much for having Quilt Cam tonight. I'm so excited that we're getting closer to the mystery quilt. I have all my fabrics and I'm ready to go. Until then, I continue to work on my Smith Mountain morning quilt. I'm working on the star blocks now. I did the alternate blocks and sent you a pick last Quilt Cam. Tonight, I'm ironing the bazillion pieces of the star points and half square corner blocks. Thanks for all you do. I cannot begin to tell you how much you have inspired me. And that's Susan in Nashua, New Hampshire who sends a picture of her star blocks in progress right there. That looks great. You know, I, I love it. So this, there are a lot of people that do so late at night, even if some of us don't. Mary says, I am making a secret for Christmas. Sewing on some, oops, blankety blank and blankety blank. Do I tell anybody what you're sewing on? <laughs> That's supposed to be a secret. She said, Seahawks and frozen fabrics for the grandchildren gifts. Thanks for having quilt cam tonight. I'm sure the grandkids aren't up and watching. So that's good. Um, all the way, we've missed several here. And if I have missed your comments, um, I will, if you asked a question, I will get back to you um, afterwards. They're just coming in like crazy. This one is uh, from Betsy Davis, who says, it's been a couple of months since I could join you with Quilt Cam. I have missed being part of the fun. I'm working on a pinwheel baby quilt and some shoulder bags. Lots going on. I read your blog every day and love keeping up with all you do. You are an inspiration. I almost have all my fabrics together and can't wait for the Grand Dilution Mystery Quilt. And she's in Middleburg, Virginia. That's Betsy. This one is from Charlotte Taylor, who says, glad you could have Quilt Cam this week. I will be working on those yo-yos. They are never ending. Kind of like your hexies. I'm excited about how the hexie is coming together. I'm just to the point of adding the third fill-in section that turns that big six-pointed star into a huge hexagon and then it'll go out from there um i've probably still got i've been working on it two years there's probably another couple of years worth of work left to go but it's not a race it's just an on the road project and i love knowing that that I, every little stitch i do stays in there okay all the way to the top here this is finn who says, hi, Bonnie, thank you for Quilt Cam. I am joining sewing along with you tonight. I am also working on nine patches. Sylvia Finn, 
I was just thinking about you the other day. And remember when you were doing your orphan train quilt and how it, it uh, encouraged us all to put those orphans to good work. Well, I had found some orphan blocks and was thinking of starting another one and it brought you to mind and I was wondering how you were doing. So I'm glad you tuned in and uh, I'll have to catch up with you and see what's going on in your world. Gail says, working on my last block. Good girl, Gail. So she's down there in this bottom corner down here. You can see where a block is missing. And then she's got her tumalo trail just about ready to put together. What a fun mess of scraps that is. That's one of my favorite all-time quilts. All-time. All right. We are going to get these red sashings on the top and the bottom. I have been in the basement literally all day because the hubby is upstairs sick and uh, it's not that I, it's not that I'm ignoring him or shunning my wifely duties or or whatever it is but I can't afford to get sick right now when I am heading off to Indiana and uh, we made sure he was medicated and fed but other than that he's on his own <laughs> And I'm staying hydrated and doing airborne and taking my vitamins and drinking extra vitamin C. I cannot afford to get sick. Oh, and this makes me so happy when the rectangles fit exactly. That's how we know the seam allowance is right. If this rectangle fits here perfectly, we are good to go. So I start sewing and then I match the end to the end. And any stretchy fabric gets eased in. And we keep it even. Because homespuns can really kind of be kind of stretchy. allowance didn't flip up there. I knew it. Guess who's out of bobbin? You guys didn't say anything. How come you didn't tell me? I've just been air sewing for only about three or four blocks, but we're going to pop this bobbin out. Which brings to mind the, the funny picture I posted today that says, uh, friends don't let friends quilt bobbinless. You should have told me. At least nothing was dropping off the back side. Okay. What I really like about this machine, it's a class 15 machine. And it, it takes a really, really big bobbin and it holds a lot of threads. Unlike the featherweights or 301s. That was the downside of the 301 is that it takes featherweight bobbin. So you you can sew really, really, really fast and you run out of bobbin thread fast. <laughs> so so uh, the class 15 machines, they, they have a really nice bobbin. It's about the size of a Bernina bobbin. Sixty six machines also have a bobbin that holds quite a bit of thread. The sixty six and ninety nines. And yes, I know I'm using blue thread. I've been sewing with really odd colors of bobbin thread, trying to use some thread up. And I've got gray on the top. 
Okay, where did I run out at? Right there. Get those threads off. Okay, we're back with it now. I just love easy patchwork. This is fun. I've been waiting all day to have this time to sew these with you. I got all the pieces cut, but then I, I let them sit while I did the quilting of the other quilt. So the anticipation for me has been growing all day as well. So the plan for Thanksgiving. We invited our friends, Mona and Rick. And then Mona said that her daughter and son-in-law were coming down. And I said, bring them over too. So that it would be their four plus me and, and, and Dave and my dad. Okay, so now we're at seven. And then Jeff said this morning that he was going to really, really try to come because he gets off um, Wednesday in the middle of the afternoon. Okay, so that makes us eight. And if Jason comes, that's nine. And I'm thinking that I want to do a smoked turkey this year. Why? Because I can buy one already cooked. <laughs> and we just have to slice it and heat it up. Uh, we're going for as easy as possible, and, and Mona's going to do half the food. So that, that makes it easy. Do you have anything that is a must-have on your Thanksgiving menu? I'm thinking of last year's uh, runaround, trying to find those baby pearl frozen onions that my dad loves. And you know what? I think that it was buy one, get one free. And so there's a package of pearl onions still in the freezer at the cabin, and I bet it's no good by now. So the question is, do I leave out the, the creamed onions for my dad, or do I do them because he's the only one that eats them? but I love my dad. Anyway, if you have a, a special recipe or, or a dish that has to be served at your Thanksgiving, send me an email, send me a comment. Let's talk about this. What's on your menu? One thing that works really well for me is to, I have three crock pots and I try to get different things going in each crock pot, like the um, sweet potatoes in one or in the little green bean casserole in the other and, and just have small crock pots of stuff simmering. Just a few more here, and we will sew these three, and then we will check in with you just again. I am on a roll here. I've also been um, really enjoying the five-minute power purge we've been doing. Have you followed along with that? I am picking just one area of my home every day that I'm home, not when I'm on the road, when I'm home. And I tackled the top drawer of my jewelry box this morning. It has been a hole for a long time. In fact, when we moved, I think the movers just let everything filter down into the whatever drawer below, and it's just been a mess. And I haven't wanted to tackle it because it's such a big job, and I'd rather be sewing. So I took one drawer this morning. Um, tomorrow I'll do another drawer. You know the kind of things that's in my jewelry box? Earrings, button earrings from the 1980s and 1990s. And I still love them and I kept them. I could not make myself ditch them out. Um, 
So I got rid of some costume costume jewelry that had turned colors, uh, like the like the the gold had turned to rust. Uh, but that kind of stuff was gone. Uh, broken chains that were um, just costume jewelry are gone. I really don't have a lot of jewelry. I don't wear a lot of expensive stuff. That's never been where my uh, interest has been. I would rather have the machines or the fabric or the other stuff versus just, I mean, what's jewelry to do with? Um, and when I travel, I don't like to travel with a lot of jewelry because I, I, I'm so into my routine. I don't want to stop and have to change out one pair of earrings for another. But look what I got today. I found my butterflies. I found them. So who knows? We, we may start changing earrings more often because there's some awful cute stuff in there I forgot I had. All right, we're going to use the white ones as our leader ender ones. Okay. Let's check in. Andy says, we always make a wine gravy that is fabulous, really simple, uses Morgan David grape Concord wine, baste the turkey in it all day in the Nesco, and then make the gravy. Still on Weight Watchers, so we plan to hike for Thanksgiving morning, but I will be eating the gravy. Andy, you have been doing a fabulous job with Weight Watchers. I think at last count, if you don't mind me saying, you might encourage everybody. I know it was over 60 pounds that you've lost, and it's just been so wonderful. I can, um, I, I can just I hear it in your voice. I, I see it in your smile. You're, you're proud of yourself, and you feel good about yourself, and then life is better all the way around. So uh, stick with it, girlfriend. I'm really, really proud of you. And for everybody who's struggling with weight, um, I just avoid anything that is breaded or deep fried or is coated in cheese or, um, you know, whatever. But, but certain things, that when it's the holidays, I'll allow myself things that I normally wouldn't have. But maybe I don't have to have six pieces of fudge, but I can have a half a piece. Things like that. We, we can't totally tell ourselves, no, we're never, 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 never going to have this again. This one comes from a, a phone number with area code 931. And she says, my Thanksgiving requirement is kielbasa and sauerkraut. Hubby is Polish, but we can't get the good fresh sausage here. You probably could if you lived in Chicago. Betsy Davis says Thanksgiving dinner is turkey, stuffing, mashed potatoes, sweet potato casserole, sauerkraut. This is a must. Betsy? Talk to that area code 913 and tell her where to find Polish sausage. Green beads and rolls, pretty basic, but such a traditional meal. I always say I'm going to try a different recipe, but know my family would be disappointed. Maybe I could try one new recipe to add on. This one's from Miss Jamie, and she says, I married into a large family, and since Grandpa was living with us, all holidays were at my house. First Thanksgiving, we had more than 20 family and friends and everything from scratch. I had been cooking for days. And when dinner was over and I was serving the pie, Dad asks, where's the fudge? Oh, my goodness. For Thanksgiving? Well, that's the thing is that, you know, we, we cook and we cook and we cook and we cook and we clean and we prepare and we make joyous and we want to give the family the best Thanksgiving possible. And they eat it in 15 minutes. And it's done. So I try to cut some corners somewhere. I will be buying my pie. Costco makes great pie. Um, and, and, and splitting it up between families who are coming for dinner. And I plan on leftovers because that's going to carry us through the entire next week. The leftovers are the best thing. Okay. This one's from Deb who says, we do pot stickers for Thanksgiving. So far, bills are the best I have tasted. I think it is the local sausage. I just finished cutting and kitting a quilt for a get-together December 1st. 
I love to cut and kit. So I have a ton of UFOs sitting around. Need to get sewing. Have a safe and happy holiday. Deb, put down the rotary cutter and go sew something. Go sew something. You'll love it. I too love to kit. I think you can take a, a totally unrelated pile of scraps. And when you cut it for a quilt and it's all cut into nice, neat pieces, it just looks so great. You want to just keep on cutting. Beth Holt says Thanksgiving must. This is Beth from El Centro, California. I'm not sure when this started, but for as long as I can remember, fruit salad has always been a must for Thanksgiving and for Christmas. Very basic, apples, oranges, and bananas. Cool Whip mini marshmallows and nuts if you want. Huge bowl, never any left. I love that too. I love the, the fruit salad that is made with the pistachio uh, pudding and, and Cool Whip in it. There's just something about that pistachio pudding. I love it. It's great. This one is from, it says the Phantom something, and it's from Jeanette in Florida who says the only time of the year I make a sauerkraut salad. My stepfather loved it, and in honor of him, I still make it. Sauerkraut, rinsed, chopped onion, celery, and green pepper. Add one cup of sugar, a little oil, and pimento. Toss gently. Make a day or so ahead. So good. So that's something that you can do ahead of time. And the ahead of time recipes are really good. One that I've used quite a bit is for mashed potatoes. You make the mashed potatoes ahead, and then you put them in the crock pot and, re and reheat them, and they're really, really good. Of course, I think all of the butter and the sour cream and, and the cream cheese <laughs> are what keep that potato recipe going good. Kevin says... My sister always hosts Thanksgiving, and my contribution is always chicken and dumplings and a layer salad. I say make those creamed onions for your daddy. That's why I make chicken and dumplings for my dad and layered salad for my mom. You're probably right, Kevin. There will be creamed onions for Thanksgiving. Joe Axelson says, under the needle, love quilt cam, definitely needed some motivation tonight to get some things finished. Under my needle tonight is an apron for a friend's son. He wanted flames. Think this is flamey enough? Must have for us at Thanksgiving or Christmas or Easter is my mom's fruit salad. Secret recipe. Even though she's a thousand miles away, she'd know. It's a mom thing. <laughs> so this is... a. Uh, Joe from Kings Bay, and she sends this picture of the fabric, and I'm biggie sizing it. Looks like she's putting the binding on there, and yes, there is definitely hot flames happening on that apron. I think you've got a winner there. Let's see. We've got um, Carol Atelier says, enjoying quilt cam while working on this ruffle scarf. Way too tired to quit. I would end up frog stitching, so I'm knitting instead. Can't wait to start this year's mystery. And she's got, oh, she, the, that kind of a ruffle scarf. These are really fun. So she's making a little ruffled scarf, and it's there on her Easy Street quilt. Great job. That's fun. Okay, I'm going to iron these. You can take a break now if you want to. Run, go get a drink. Hit the necessary, whatever it is. I am just going to press these. Actually, I think I'm just going to cut them apart first. So I can only press, they're getting to the big side now, so I can only fit two on top of my mat. So chain pressing these is just not going to work. So we're going to cut them apart and then press. I would say for my boys, my, my oldest son Jason has to have that dang green bean casserole. And I'm just not a huge fan of it. I don't know, you know, it's just, let's take a bunch of cans of stuff, you know, canned green beans, canned mushroom soup, um, canned, you know, fried onion thingies, but, but he loves it. So I make it for him. And then uh, our youngest son, Jeff, absolutely loves the, my, my candied yams with the marshmallows on top. So we do that because we love them. I'm liking these. I was worried that the red sashing would blend too much into the red squares, but 
since the squares are kind of platy checks, you can still see that red square up against the sashing and it's just fine. I was worried about that. All right. Let's add the fourth side onto these. I am. I am going to find a cabinet that I can fix to hold a 301. It's on my list. I think it's almost time to change this needle too because I heard it kind of going pop, pop, pop through the fabric. I should have done it when the bobbin ran out. How often do you change your needle? I never want to dispose of a needle before it's time. <laughs> So I kind of wait until I notice that, okay, my stitches aren't forming really great, or I hear that it's kind of starting to make a little pop, 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 then it's time to get a new needle. Some people do it after every six hours of sewing, but I never time how I've sewed. Or some people say, well, it's, it's after three bobbins or whatever. Well, bobbins are different sizes. Let's face it, I push the, the expirate, expire by or use by dates on my yogurt too, so. <laughs> it expired two days ago. Well, that's okay. You can't tell, it's yogurt. Excuse me. I probably also need to get all the lids out of the bobbin area. So my plan is I'm going to take these once the strips are all the way around and then pineapple blossom style I'm going to do sew and flip corners. The red ones will have white corners and my white ones will have blue corners and then they'll make this design as they come together. At least that's the plan. If it doesn't work, I'll set them with sashing or something. We're just playing here. I just have an idea. I can hear my phone buzzing. Other th exciting things that are happening. Um, on Thursday, that's the 20th, I am participating in Quilt Makers Blog Hop for the 100 Blocks by 100 Designers, Volume 10. So you'll want to come by the blog on Thursday because there will be a giant giveaway. So don't miss that. That's going to be really fun. That's a thousand blocks. If you have every issue of the 100 blocks by 100 designers and you pick up this volume 10, that's a thousand blocks in your hands right there. There's so much you can do with all of those and from some really great designers. I know that every block that I have turned in, I have I have desires and plans to actually make a full quilt out of each design. And it really is too many quilts, too little time right now. One last one. Get 
get them all up here. Now there's a big chain of blocks. We are making some progress tonight. Hopefully you feel like you are too. Okay, so I'm now going to add, this is the white one is my leader ender thing going on here. Okay. So there's that 10. Let's check in and then we'll press those. I don't have the um, corners cut out yet to do the flip and sew part on these. So I will move on to the neutral surrounded one. So Lucky says, Canadian fan here. So I've already had my Thanksgiving, but it would never be Thanksgiving without homemade rice pudding. Definitely a family favorite. Now you just hit the nail right on the head. That is one thing we really love in our family. And I will plan anytime I have a dinner that has rice. I will make extra rice just so that I can put it in the rice pudding. So I know that my family would be giving you thumbs up right now. It's just, that's just comfort food. Patricia Carey in Houston says, congratulations to Kevin the quilter on his quilt in Houston. So yes, Kevin, thank you so much for uh, submitting your quilt to Houston. I wish I could say that I saw it, but I had a mere two hours in Houston, so I'm ashamed to say I did not track your quilt down. Um, I failed you. I'm really, really sorry. But congratulations on having your quilt in uh, Houston. She says it was named Radar because of the tornado that hit Norman, Oklahoma several years ago, and you made the quilt after the picture of the radar that day. So congratulations to those who had their quilts in Houston. Janny says, love quilt cam. For Thanksgiving, I have to have candied yams and fruit salad. So ready for Thanksgiving. You know, forget the turkey. Let's just <laughs> have all the side dishes. Marsha Reed says, with all of the normal turkey, sweet potatoes and all, my husband and son must have the scalloped oysters. Using the recipe my mother always made, happy Thanksgiving. Enjoy uh, the family. And that's Marsha near Toledo. Scalloped oysters. I can honestly say I've never had that. I'm intrigued, and it sounds yummy. This one is from Levi Henson, who says, I absolutely love to see what you're doing next and all your patterns and ideas. I'm a part of the Crusoe Friendship Club in Canton, North Carolina. Each year, we have a quilt show. 2015 will be number 26, and each year, we do a raffle quilt. I am writing to ask permission. I don't think this is supposed to be a quilt cam thing. They want permission to use Smoky Mountain Stars for the raffle quilt. Absolutely. You are welcome to use any of my patterns for um, raffle quilts or for, you can, you can even put them up for sale yourself if you want, for a fundraiser, whatever. You can teach from my patterns. The only thing I ask is that you do not change the name of the quilt. Don't change Smoky Mountain Stars to being, you know, stars over Toledo or whatever, because you lose connection of where the pattern came from. So please, 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 if you make my quilts and you label them, please include the original name of the pattern on your label. You can say, you know, this is, this is my pattern, my whatever, blue, blah, 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 and then put in there, um, based on a pattern from Bonnie Hunter called Name the Original Quilt, whatever it is, just please include the original name of the, of the quilt and list me as the designer, and that's it. You are welcome to do any of my patterns as a raffle for your guild, your church, your fundraiser, whatever it is. So I'll be sending Levi a message back on that. Andy says, almost 68 pounds that she's down. That's almost 70 pounds. Almost 70 pounds. That's more than a 50-pound bag of dog food. And those 50-pound bags of dog food are heavy. So proud of your girlfriend. You're doing awesome. Keep it up. You inspire me. Iris says, I'm afraid of black and whites in Mystery Quilt. I don't find I don't find catcher, which you add to the washing, and vinegar doesn't work many times with me either. I know you don't like such questions, but any other color you suggest, I will be happy. 
I'm not sure I understand. So we are going to, um, you, Iris, you can use whatever colors you want for the mystery. Don't worry about it. Just choose colors that you like. And that's my blanket statement. Deanna Turner says, hope to join you on the cruise. Will be my first cruise. Love Quilt Cam and follow you on every time. Deanna Turner from Oxford, Alabama. So glad. That's October 4th to 11th, 2015. Information just coming in. Anita says, new vintage machine. Hi from cold, windy Chicago. This morning, coming Saturday, a new vintage singer will be coming to live at my house. A Red Eye Singer 66 treadle. My friend will retain ownership as this was her grandmother's machine. Okay, so it's your, your, your this machine is going into foster care. <laughs> My friend will retain ownership. I will have full custody possession to get her cleaned up, running again, and use her for quilt piecing. She is in rough shape. Sorry, I can't seem to find the pictures, but it will be a perfect winter project along with the Grand Illusion Mystery. 11 days and counting, though it will be 12 days for me as I have a road trip planned for the 28th. Thanks for Quilt Camp tonight, and that's from Anita. So we're sending you um, treadle good wishes there. Diana says, glad to be joining you for Quilt Cam. Love the Carolina chain. Also love the picture of the back of the mystery quilt. <laughs> Did you guys catch that one? I finished quilting the mystery quilt last week and posted, here's your sneak preview, but it was just the backing fabric. I know, I'm bad that way, aren't I? She said, see you in New Year's in Plano. Can't wait. Love the mystery quilt. Uh, this time of year as other times it is too much hectic at work but slows down some this time of the year thanks for letting us join you tonight so I guess there's just as many of us who love it this time of year as those who just find their lives too hectic to deal with it and knowing that you can't please all the people all the time at least they can print it out save it and do it later Kathleen Fry says, check out this awesome cake made by Diana Herrera for our friendship day at Quilt Guild. Diana made your Celtic solstice last year. And she's, oh, isn't that wonderful? It's even got quilted lines. This is a cake. I'll save the picture and post it on the blog because you've got to be able to see the detail. There are stitching lines quarter inch inside each piece. That is so awesome. Terrific, gorgeous colors too. I love that. Looks does look very Celtic solstice-ish. Terrific. All right. Well, guess what, everybody? I am at a stopping spot. I can't go any further with these other than just um, snipping and pressing them. And I need to cut some more rectangles for these two so that I can finish these. And then I am off and running on this stack but it's the beginning of the same thing all over again, and we're already at 10.15, so I guess we've come to the close of the evening. Thank you for spending tonight with me. It's been a lot of fun, and I'm looking forward to a whole holiday um, time off of six weeks to sew, and we'll try to stick in some daytime quilt camps as well during the month of December. Of course, we will be busy doing our Celtic soul, not our Celtic solstice. Old habits die hard. I've been saying that for a year. Our Grand Illusion Mystery Clues will start on Friday the 28th and will be every Friday until completion. On Mondays, we have our Mystery Monday link up. So if you have a blog, a Flickr page, um, or a, I'm, I'm going to allow Pinterest this year. So if you, if you post your progress to Pinterest, you can link that. Um, back to the mystery, all I ask is when you post your, your own photos to your Pinterest that you include a, a link to my blog so that people know where they too can find the pattern and participate in the mystery. So those are the three ways that you can hit us up on the Mystery Monday link up. Unfortunately, you won't be able to link to a Facebook page or um, some of the other things going out there. But if you have a blog or a Flickr account, or a Pinterest, you will be able to play in our Mystery Monday link up. Other than that, I think I'm done. I'm ready to head upstairs and grab myself a piece of pumpkin pie, and then and then maybe curl into bed and get a uh, 
some reading done on my Diana Gabaldon book that I'm still deep into and savoring small moments at a time. And we will catch you next time on Quilt Cam. Until then, this is Bonnie Hunter from the basement. Still early where you are. Keep sewing. Don't stop just because I am. Have a good night, everybody. Bye.